Guys, bow, 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 the newest thing in town is the Airlift 1000. Just kidding, we're not sponsored. Eric decided to buy some little bladders to put in between his coil springs and his rear. We're gonna be installing these rear air bladders into the rear coil springs of the Mazda Speed 3. I'm pretty sure they're gonna fit the Gen 2s as well. It's basically from a company called Airlift, and this is the Airlift 1000, and the part number is 80754. This is the part number that I looked up on the Mazda Speed forums where someone had done this particular mod and said that these actually fit the rear coil springs perfectly. Basically the, the rear is going to squat when you accelerate and uh, the front's going to lift and because we're front wheel drive that's a problem. It's going to prevent articulation in the rear by stuffing up the rear spring with that. We've got some line here and there's some Schrader valves in the kit and that'll allow us to basically deflate these so that they're not really doing anything during normal driving and then when you're at the track or you you're at the strip or you just want to reduce rear squat during acceleration you can uh, pump them up with a bicycle pump so basically like if you're at a red light and you're lined up with like a nice 5.0 Mustang or something you just run out of the car take your bicycle pump <laughs> pump up these two lines get back in the car before it turns green and you're good to go or just start pumping it with the line inside the car and just the guy will see you <laughs> These are actually designed for towing. You can see the pictures here. There's these trucks and SUVs that are towing stuff. And what these do is they prevent the rear end from squatting down too low while you're towing something. But in our case, we're not gonna use it for towing. We're gonna use it for performance and to reduce squat under acceleration. I, I use that to clean stuff. Yeah, that's all we use it for. This is a good beer, guys. You should try it. It's strong. You make it sound like we're sponsored. It feels strong. I, I mean, it's only... You just got free beer? It's only 5%, but it, it just absorbs into the body quite nicely. Look at that. Look at that. You ready? Okay, let's bring it into the garage. Ready to do some work on Let's bring it into the garage. I will be in about this much time. Look at those rear lights, that's, that's cool. B -b -b back it up! That's good, that's good. All right, now the first thing is to jack up this jacked up snowball. I'm gonna take the rear wheels off, put some jack stands under here so we can work safely. Disconnect the, sh the rear shocks from the control arm. Slowly lower the control arm, remove the spring, stuff those bags inside the rear springs, reinstall everything. Route those cables. Run our lines and figure out exactly where we're gonna mount the Schrader valves. You only have top license plate yeah. screws. Why don't that. you have it come through the bottom license plate holes? Because my license plate cover there's not a hole at the bottom. Ah, and you want to have it say Mazda Speed in the license plate cover. Well, yeah, because you're not going to drill through it. Because function yeah, doesn't you're not gonna, you're not gonna drill through the You just want something aesthetic, right? 21 millimeter socket. <laughs> loosen the wheel lock at all? Yeah, wheel lock's loosen. Push it in. It's always good to use a jack stand. You want to use the six tons or the uh, three tons? There's the smallies. There's the smallies. The smallies are ready to go. Okay, lower it down. Don't break anything. What? Don't break anything. Have I ever broken anything it's possible? Ever. Man. What the hell happened? I never loosened that yet. Seriously? Yeah. Loosen the wheel lock at all? Yeah, wheel lock's loosened. Why? Because I was, I was holding the camera and you said don't break anything. And I was like, what the? Oh, don't break anything. Just my beer. Uh, these wheels are uh, ET300 offset. The hell Sorry, ET negative 300 offset. They're large, they're 22s. Uh, they stick out a bit. Uh, technically, they should be on the front because it's front wheel drive, but uh, this is just a really cool kind of chariot type look. They're called Eric Radials. Guys. Oh. <laughs> All right, so that's the bolt on the lower control arm. Control arm. Just gonna loosen that. Mm -hmm. 
So now we are loosening the lower control arm on the other side. Yeah, so we don't need to remove the shocks, guys. Now let me see if I can get the spring out now without removing the sway bar. Okay. Now I think we gotta remove the sway bar. So we did not need to remove these nuts right here on the sway bar. We only needed to remove the 14s up top here. So let's just remove the 14s up top, on top of the control arms for the sway bar links. Where's the pry bar? Okay. Sway bar is now facing down like that, out of the way. And the control arms are free. So now we can take the spring out. Nice and easy. We're gonna keep this mount. Let's go take out the spring on the other side and we'll show you guys how to stick the bags in. Bag it and tag it. Ooh. Quality springs here. Dirty as hell. This is the top part of the spring. This is gonna sit underneath. How was that? Does this fit? This is an eye box spring, so. You scared yourself. <laughs> Maybe this is just for stock springs? This top piece, some kind of a bump stopper, I guess. See that right there? That nut? This piece right here is gonna fit snugly on it. I need a hammer. Snugly means you need to finesse it with iron. So I'm gonna clean the spring off really quickly, as best I can, sort of. Oh wow, they almost look like they're brand new. It's a nice color too, eh? It's like a greenish. I don't see any green in there. Okay. Oh, maybe there is. Yeah, it's a bit olivey. Olivey. It matches your jacket. I'm I hate just... olives. You do? I hate olives. Really? I don't like them. Olives I don't like the taste. And onions, eh? You're, you're, you're a weird one, I gotta say. I don't like onions either. You're a weird one. I love both those things. Is this really the conversation you want to have with your buddy tonight? Why not? It's honesty. No, it's just... It's all about honesty. The later it gets, I think, the more boring we become. Don't worry about it, bud. Don't worry about it. <sighs> oh, it's a little easier with... Did you spray more lube on it? I'm going to once we get to the next level. You should have coated the outside of it beforehand. Okay. You're wasting all that good stuff. Let's see if this works. Wow. wow. It just okay. went right in. So the lube yeah, really lube helps. Up. Lube it up. I don't know how far down the spring we should go, but I'm going to try to push on the side here. Oh, wow. So wow. clean the springs and lube them up. Yeah, clean the springs and lube the bags. This apparently goes on the bottom, but it is a bit tight. Maybe I gotta lube this up too. Should wear gloves for this, but uh, I don't for some reason. Does it go this way or that way? It goes this way. All right, we're gonna use the bandsaw. And we're gonna trim just a little bit of the edges here because we're having a hard time fitting this in. I'm not sure if that'll be the same with the stock springs, but with these eye box it is. So we're gonna trim it down a little bit. How do I do this? Uh, you're gonna turn the bandsaw on and you're gonna turn it down a bit. Can you turn it on for me? Alright, I'll hold the trigger and you cut. Ready? Okay, ready? Nice and easy. So as you can see here, we just kind of trimmed off some of the edge and uh, this should still work fine. I don't think it's compromised its strength at all. Let's see if it fits inside the spring. Yeah, there we go. That's more to my liking. All right, now let's go ahead and cut the second one so that we can be done with the bandsaw since it's midnight and the neighbors are probably pissed off. Okay, so we've uh, trimmed both of these little airbag supports so they can fit into the eye box springs. I'm just gonna file them off now. All right, as you can see, we pop the line on there and they give you some of these little spring clamps. This is gonna go like this, the groove facing down towards the control arm. I'm gonna fish it all the way through.
We don't want to cut the line yet because we don't know how much we need, so we kind of have to deal with it in the way. Now that we've cut this little bottom bump stop type of thing, it fits in the spring nicely. And we're good. So now we can actually install the spring. And to do that, start by fishing the other end of the line out through the uh, hole in the control arm right there. Through that hole. Let me have some beer. It came with two of these valves, those brass ones over there, for you to inflate them using like a bicycle pump. And you can check pressures. The T fitting is interesting because we can just have both the lines going from both bags to a center junction and then take a little bit of line out to one valve. Meaning anytime you pump up the system, both sides will have the same pressure, which is kind of what you want. You want the same stiffness on both sides. I think that's the way to go. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna line up the bottom of the coil into the groove on the control arm. And we gotta get this. There we go. Nice. So we got everything tightened up. Lower control arms tightened up, shocks tightened up, although we didn't need to remove the shock. You can see everything in place there. The top bump stop, the airbag, and the support piece on the bottom. Okay, so we have our T-fit up. You can see the little T-joint there. One line goes to that bag, the other line goes to this bag. And then that line over there is gonna come all the way up, and we're gonna feed it into this panel here. We're gonna use this existing hole right here. And that's where the valve's gonna go to pump it up. Here we have the valve. Yeah. We've got a nut, we've got a washer, and then a locking washer. And it's the same on the other side. It's a 13 millimeter nut, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, just get them snug here and tighten it up. Okay, so as with all the lines, before you push them on, it's a good idea to put the clamps on so you don't have to feed the clamp all the way through or so you don't have realize that you, you can't get the clamp on because the lines are already connected. <laughs> We've sprayed some lubricating uh, silicone spray in here to make it easier to go on. It's gonna go on to this one here. And it's gonna be easier to put on because it's tightened down to the actual body. Just like that. Pliers, where are they? Right above your head. I can't reach. I'm in a very confined position right now and I, 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 I... Ah, okay, I'll get it. You get it. This is like Twister Automotive Edition. Oh, these aren't the ones that I wanted. Jesus. I wanted these ones. Okay, yeah, these ones work well. They're nice and wide, flat. Ah. Little clamps with little buggers. Should be good. It's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, let me get out. Ugh. Oh, God. Need a garage. I need a big garage. Need a. Need a lot of things. Need a hoist, actually. Mainly it's just a hoist. I can see everything. So here's our line here hooked up. We got our valve, Schrader valve. Line's coming out. We've zip tied it to this uh, wiring harness. Here's our T-fitting going inside the control arms over to the airbags there. This side as well, airbags. We got our little bump stops up top there just snugly on that bolt on the subframe. Got our little cushion rubbers on the bottom of the, of the uh, airbags as well. Or not, they're the protectors, actually. They're valve protectors. They're the nozzle protectors. I don't know the name, guys. There's all these terminologies, but... It's either like a hockey puck. It looks like a hockey puck, but it's got a hole in it. We got our clamps here. Now, here's our line coming from the Schrader valve. And it's gonna go like this, but we gotta put our clamp on here first. Don't spring out at me. Lube it up. I'm gonna lube it up with some lubrication spray. Lubricating spray. I can't speak. This is gonna slip on. Ooh, don't break the tea. Last one, man, last push. Push! Congratulations, it's a non-squatting Mazda. Uh, basically, we wanted to make sure we had enough play here because the suspension will articulate quite a bit. Just wanna make sure the lines aren't rubbing against the frame or anything or the control arms while the suspension moves. See this control arm here? How there's this little groove, this little slot? The line fits perfectly inside it. And what I don't want is to have this come out like this and potentially rub on the control arm and wear the line out. So if we can hold it in this groove here, that'd be perfect. We're gonna use zip ties, go through this hole, wrap around this line, and then reconnect the zip tie to keep it in place. If you look at this side, you can see that I've zip tied it here and it, the line stays in that little groove and doesn't move. So there's no contact with any body parts here. And you can see we've zip tied the T here, just through here. Everything is not rubbing against anything. Here's what we got going on here, guys. Bags, lines coming out, following the control arm, going to a T. Everything's zip tied nicely in place with some slack. 
and then that line goes all the way up to this valve here that's where we can inflate the bags and the benefit there is both bags will inflate at the same pressure so you only have to check one set of pressure for both sides okay everything's tight all the suspension components are tight we just uh, pressurize them verify that there's no leaks now we deflated them because when we put the car to normal height we want to make sure that the uh, bags are properly sitting inside the springs and it's obviously going to be hard for them to move around if there's air in them so Make sure there's no air in them first, lower the car to normal height, and then inflate them to where you want them to be. Go a bit higher and then use the, the uh, accurate gauge. Damn it. It's lifting the car, eh? Is it? Yeah, keep going. Crazy. All right, so this should stiffen up the rear end. Joe's racing gauge. They're pretty good, eh? I got it from Amazon. Let's see where we're at. I'm gonna bring it down to 20. 25. You wanna feel the difference. You wanna see what it's like. We'll leave it at 25 for now. So guys, in conclusion, this modification is amazing, okay? I think even for a stock car, this is perfect. Realistically, I could have just kept the stock springs in the rear and just put the, um, the bags into the stock springs and it would have been just as good. The vehicle basically doesn't rock back and forth anymore in between shifts and the front end stays planted down. And when you get back on the gas, it just pulls, you know, it just, there's no rocking motion. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it, it feels more connected. I mean, I can't go back now. There's, I can't go back to, to having them deflated. Once you experience driving your car without having front end lift in between shifts and everything just feels like an arrow. It just feels like it's going straight down the road. Traction is better. Acceleration feels better. Shifting feels crisper. Like you just love shifting this thing now because there's no movement from front to back and it just feels planted. So definitely recommend this to anybody who wants to reduce squat and have a better driving experience. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.